after years of delays and cost overruns and billions of dollars spent on two nuclear reactors, work at the VC summer nuclear facility is coming to an end on those new reactors. DC summer, here we come. So we're heading south on kind of a, a cloudy, rainy day to Columbia area. I talked to Frank who owns Steel Horse Smokehouse, and that was like the go-to barbecue truck for the workers at the plant. Hundreds of people a day showing up to, to have that famous South Carolina barbecue, and I'm looking forward to trying it myself. Uh, tomorrow we're going to talk to a realtor who uh, had a lot of first-hand experience how the housing market changed. And over 6,000 workers uh, had to pick up and leave and find something else. You break up families and communities and you make the environment a lot worse. After a 90-minute drive through a rainstorm, I saw a double rainbow and pulled into this park here. And it couldn't be a more idyllic setting there's people fishing, there's birds fishing, and there, right there, one power plant, what could have been. Two more power plants was supposed to usher in the nuclear renaissance. These, uh, these new plants that were even safer, uh, that had uh, mo modular parts uh, to bring down the cost of construction. Just have to look across and see the remnants of a construction project that's been abandoned. South Carolina barbecue is like, it's kind of its own thing, right? What's, how's it different than uh, other places? Well, South Carolina barbecue is mustard base, um, is what oh, they, uh, okay. they like to pride themselves on. We do a red sauce. We did red beans and rice and smoked salmon and shrimp po' boys and a little of everything that we we could think of. And there was always somebody out there that, uh, that enjoyed it. Oh yeah. Mm. <laughs> so you, you, would you pull this truck out to the, the plant? I uh, sure did, sure did, yep. Uh, yeah. Five days a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You became close, you get your regulars coming in every day. You know what they want to eat before they even get there. You learn their families' names and their wives and their babies if they're having them. And huh? I hear from them from time to time. Unfortunately, a lot of the people that got laid off, they had brought their families in from all different areas. Um, I mean, as far as California and, and uh, uh, Michigan, uh, there was gosh people from all over the place. Of course, watched it. You know, every time we went out there, something different had. Uh, had gone on, the changes every time, and, and uh, it was pretty cool to watch it grow. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it just never grew all the way out <laughs> like it should have. <laughs> how many years were you there? Uh, five. How did how did the conversation uh, change over time? You know, in the beginning, it was excitement, going to get it built. Uh, you know, and this is a particular deadline, and you know, looking good to hit it, and and uh, you know. Slowly, as you got into it, and you got the feeling from uh, from everybody, yeah, it's it's not it's not going to be hit. I mean, they're going to miss the deadline. It's going to have to be pushed back. They need more people. And I had a couple guys um, sitting at the table that worked at the plant. And, um, nobody else was around, so I went out and just kind of talking with them. And uh, they told me then that the plant had shut down and they couldn't get back on site. And I said, "You got to be kidding me." So it was just a, a complete and utter shocker. I mean, it just so uh, it actually they, they shut it down and sent everybody home that day. It's always a tragedy when we lose a nuclear plant or two that were nearing completion. Unit 2 is actually 92% uh, 92 of the components were on site at that point. Nuclear plants don't get the subsidies for their clean air contributions. And they have the added expense 
of taking care of every single pound of their waste product, every single ounce of it, whereas your fossil generators are allowed to pump it up into the sky, where it gets into our lakes, into the fish we eat. Kids have to breathe it in and get asthma at higher rates, where people in their older years end up with, with heart disease or cancer, have their lives cut short. The fossil generators are just allowed to do that. Hopefully, if we keep telling the story, things will change. I'm Tony Timmerman. I've been in this office a little over four years now, and I've lived in this community for almost 45 years. Wow, 45 years? So you grew up here? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I moved here when I was about 12 years old. Wow. Well, once the announcement was made, the construction on the on the plant started, so that was the first wave of people that came in. And then they started hiring to start training people to, to operate the, the, uh, the new uh, hmm. buildings when they came on board. But uh, that, that, of course, that never happened. So you yeah. had a lot of operators that were hired and then didn't have a job to stay at. So, yeah. so a lot of those lost their jobs. A lot of them rented houses, so there were a lot of rental properties in the area and they all got taken up very quickly. So there was very little places to stay and then uh, a lot of new construction in the area with all the people coming in. When the announcement was made, a lot of people had to, to take off. What kind of contributions have you seen in the community as a result of the plant being there? The uh, financial impact from from the uh, the jobs that is created. Uh, how about the plant employees? Are they active in the community? Oh, absolutely. It, it's kind of expands a, a wide area, not only in our community, Chapin, but it goes all the way around Columbia into the Blythewood area, the Irmo area. So, so they have a, a big impact in all the communities they're involved in. In 2010, I was an employee at Yucca Mountain Project and it shut down. I got offered a position out here at BC Summer and I worked there for eight years until the shutdown. Um, and in the midst of the a couple weeks before the shutdown, we were about to start building our barn and so we, we ended up taking a leap of faith and opening the barn. When you're thinking about the barn, you're, uh, you always had you still had your BC summer job to, right. to go back to. Yeah. Um, what what was that? What was that like? So I had everything I owned was invested in this barn. So when we got word that the site was shutting down, it was kind of like I was kind of going to count on my money from the site to supplement the barn. And so so that's where the leap of faith comes in because we didn't have that cushion anymore. So. Definitely not um, enough to sustain us like the site was, but it's yeah. it's working out. You know, the you make adjustments. Great. You change Great. change your lifestyle. Yeah. I had eight years at at the, at the site, and so we all wanted to see it succeed. So it'd be great if it reopened. From what I'm told, that's not going to happen, and, and that's sad. It's sad, but it was it was a, a great eight years. As of this video, the average South Carolina household is paying an extra $25 per month for the abandoned reactors, while the two main stakeholders in the VC Summer Project, SCE and G and Santi Cooper, are fighting about who should be financially and legally responsible. But with all the headlines about corporate mismanagement and legal battles, it's easy to forget one important point. This isn't an indictment on splitting atoms to make power. There are plenty of examples of nuclear plants being built on time and on budget, both historically in the U.S. and around the world today. When projects are done well, they work. And the more plants you build, the cheaper they become, and the faster you cut carbon emissions. What happened in South Carolina is a story about a mismanaged construction project and who's left to pick up the pieces when things go awry. Hopefully this tragedy will be the last of its kind as building techniques improve and reactors become more standardized. It'll also help if governmental policies begin to value nuclear power for being the clean energy source that it is. If those two things don't happen, communities and the environment will continue to be hit hard. If they do, we have a very bright future indeed. 
Thanks for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this one, click to subscribe.